Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Free Sixty Three with Game Three of the Two v Two Tournament Finals. This is a replay from earlier today because I had to go for an appointment. Yeah, I know. I normally am there for the entire thing, but honestly, that this tournament lasted nine hours. This is the longest tournament by far, mostly thanks to the bronze match, partly thanks to the fact that people weren't coming on time. If you're going to be in a tournament, either come on time or let us know if you're going to be late. Like Kmar said, he's going to be late. He was late, but we got that game done in parallel with a few others as well. So that wasn't too bad. But we had to replace some players like an hour in. And then, of course, the bronze match lasted for two hours, which is a bit of a shame. Aquatic Divide needs some work. Anyway, back to game three. So right now we have one and one for Anakin the Sponge versus Cubay and Eternal Rookie. This is... Whoever wins this game needs to then win game four in order to win the entire series. Or win game five if they lose game four. But then that'll be a perfect tiebreaker match. Exciting. Perfect exciting. Wait, that's making any sense. Anyway, the sponge is... Okay, sponge going for Cloaky Bots. Anarchy going for Light Vehicles. Cube going for... He's going for Cloaky Bots. And Eternal Wookie going for Shields. And quick... Ro he's going Rogue right off the bat. Not even going for Bandits. Just going Rapid Rogue. Glaive coming up for Cubase. That kind of makes sense because Cubase is handling the raiding. Eternal Rookie's handling... Actually, Cubase is also going for Ro for Zeus. So Cubase and Eternal Rookie just going heavy assault forces. I guess they want to try to just push in. Possibly kind of an all-in assault unit push. Early slasher for Anarchid. He wants to have a rolling defense. I haven't seen a slasher start this entire tournament, surprisingly enough. I wonder if it's gone out of fashions lately. Last tournament, it was really popular, but not this tournament, surprisingly. This is the first game I've seen it. Game three of the finals, and we finally get a slasher start. Most of the time it's been Scorcher Dart. Although, admittedly, not a whole lot of light vehicle starts to begin with, but of those there have been, not a lot of them have been slasher starts. Even the one that was on the intersection. I think a lot of the times people thought air was coming, they'd go for hovers of the flail, so I guess that kind of makes sense. And these rogues are doing a weird sort of dance step. Not even lifting their... Okay, now they're going. Now they're moving the left leg forward. They're just... They were just going synchronized dancing. I'm not sure what kind of dance that would be. Is that a shimmy? I don't know. It looks kind of fancy, but it's not the most practical. Still, yeah, synchronized dancing, rogues moving in. So basically, West Side Story. That's what's happening right now, is West Side Story. Synchronized dancing rogues. Can't... Not really much more I can say about that. So, we'll ignore those and go on QA's command, which is quite far forward. Has morphed up once to Beam Laser. Not morphing quite yet, though. Very aggressively taking the center. Neither player going for the south yet. Or neither team going for the south yet. But Cubay unfortunately loses his warrior, and there are still the rogues that are going around trying to deal with this... Trying to deal with the Sponge's Commander. A little bit tricky. The Sponge's Commander does have a shotgun, so short range, but still difficult to approach. Once, however, that gets approached properly, then it's going to be a bit of a problem. But yeah, at this point, not a problem. Anarchist Commander up front as well. All the players are moving forward. In fact, Eternal Rookie, why are you... Okay, this is a mistake. And I think it's going to cost them the game. Eternal Rookie, first off, his Commander is not up front helping out. Second off, in not being up front helping out, he's going to the worst Metal Extractor. Spending a lot of metal to go to the worst metal extractor, he should be going here. Either just to push the center, or going down to the south to take all the metal. But no, he's going for the absolute worst metal extractor. I think you might not realize that these metal extractors are terrible. And until later in the game, not worth getting. And maybe not even then, but definitely not early in the game. Not when a lot of your metal's on the line. At this point, the economy is fairly even, but whoever took the south, if someone takes the south, that is going to be game for them. Neither team, like I said, has gone for it. Still, three minutes in the game, everyone's focusing on the center, and I think Anarchid and the Sponge... No, I think. Anarchid and the Sponge are going to take it. Partly because Eternal Rookie is spending a lot of his metal, instead of on this factory building units, he's spending it on getting metal extractors that don't do much. Getting like one and a half metal here. And Cubase lost his commander, and with that, I think Cubase and Eternal Rookie will lose the game. I think Anarchid and the Sponge... Anarchid and the Sponge is going to push through just the rockers they have so far. I mean, Rocco against Rogue. Actually, it's a little bit harder to dodge Rocco projectiles and Rogue projectiles because Rogue projectiles arc while Rocco projectiles move in a straight line. So it's harder to dodge them. You can't walk towards them to dodge them or away from them. Whereas Rogue projectiles, you can dodge in pretty much any direction because they arc. As long as you dodge a decent distance, you're going to avoid them. The Slash is in position. Will stop this Zeus from getting in. And I don't... Yeah, I think we're going to move on to game four with Cubane and Eternal Wookiee down two to one. We'll see Eternal Wiki finally going over to the south, or no, going to the center mechs is a little bit late, not focusing on his commander. He's focusing instead on, what is he focusing on? Well, he's 
apparently focusing on the main base. And I guess that's all he really has to focus on besides his commander, so yeah, they... As you said, lost the cheese war. That is true, because apparently Cupid and Eternal Rookie were not communicating about how they were planning on doing the cheese war, and Eternal Rookie did not realize that this is one and a half metal in total for two metal extractors. That is not worth it. Not on this map where most of the metal extractors are... Well, metal spots at the north are all one and a half each, or a little over one and a half each, and the south are huge. Eternal Rookie finally taking the south metal, but it's too late. It's not going to work. I mean, he might be able to, with some really clever trickiness with shields, actually get past this. But I don't know. It's not really going to work out too well. Cubay has no economy. Eternal Rookie, most of his economy is bound up in his commander, and it looks... Oh, yeah, Anarchid's going to the south, I think. Oh, wait, does, do they know? Yeah, they know. They definitely know. They have radar. Anarchid and the Sponge are well aware of what's going on. And, yeah, they are... This is it. Eternal Rookie and Cubay realize there's not much more they can do. This is game... And we're moving on to game four. Two to one for Anakin the Sponge. I'm gonna mark that up now because, well, it's pretty. Oh, okay, I won't mark it up now. Mark it up in just a second when it actually happens. Yeah, Turn Wiki about to lose his commander to the Slashers. Does have the Metal Extractor up, but gonna lose that fairly soon, too. So Eternal Rookie's still kind of in the game, but not much. Okay, Cubay's out. In fact, if he loses this Metal Extractor, Cubay's quite literally out of the game. And yeah, that's game. So Anakin the Sponge. They do win this game. We are going to move on to game four between Anarchid, Sponge, and Cubane Eternal Rookie. And that map... What map was chosen? I can't find my web browser. Ah, okay. We have it on Baron. Apparently, that's what Cubane Eternal Rookie wanted. Let's see if it works for them. If it does, we are moving on to game five. If not... Then, four games in, and my prediction was way off. Anyway, get that started in just a moment, so stay tuned. Welcome back, 0K fans! This is Shadow 3 with Game 4 of the Finals for the June 2v2 Tournament. Anarchy and the Sponge vs. Cubay and Eternal Rookie on Baron. And Anarchy and the Sponge are up 2-1. to one. So if they win this, they are going to win entirely. If not, we are on to game five. The sponge going for Cloakies, Anarchy going for Cloakies, another double factory. Shields and air for Eternal Rookie and Cubay. A bit more varied there. And on this map, air should work decently well. It is more of a 1v1 map. Actually, it is a 1v1 map. Outright, it's a 1v1 map, but air, because the corner is easier to defend. We saw air stars earlier, and they typically work out well on corner maps and poorly on maps where you have sides you can be flanked on. Because the thing with air, especially well in 2v2, Larger games doesn't matter as much. The more players you have, the less it matters, but in a 2v2, that's half of your ground army, or at least half of the middle that could have been ground army going into air, and air... Air has a pretty specific counter, and also can't take map control. Especially not planes. Gunships sort of, kind of can, but planes most definitely cannot. Raven coming in right off the bat. Looks like we're gonna have very quick Raven snipes. Probably gonna go for Metal Extractor. I'm gonna scout out, see what's going on here. And yeah, it does go for Metal Extractor. We'll take out a Metal Extractor too, although it's a cheap... Uh, it's a low value Metal Extractor. One Metal Per Second Extractor, not the two. This is a bit tricky as well, just like last map. We do have some twos and some ones. In the base, there's two twos and two ones. So it's six... Uh, yeah, six Metal in total. But instead of having three two value Metal Extractors, one of those is split among two one value Metal Extractors. So it works a bit better for teams, actually. But it does mean you have to be careful when you're harassing. You gotta make sure you hit the two Metal Extractor, which is a bit more defensible. But also, of course, more valuable. That being said, though, it does force Anarchy to spend more metal on the worst metal extractor. I guess there's that, but I think really better just to take out the metal extractor that gives more income. So Anakin the Sponge going for a counterattack along the south side. Eternal Rookie's commander not in a good spot. Really bad spot, actually. He's going to lose the metal extractor, and I think it itself is maybe not going to go down, but it's going to take a lot of damage. It has to jump away. Oops. Okay, that was weird. Okay, perfect. Sorry, someone just messed up the tracking. And that Raven, unfortunately, does not do the trick. Looks like we have gremlins up here, from the sound of it. Yep, there it is. There's the gremlin. That got rid of the Raven, no problem. Same time, though, we do have Cuba coming in with a couple couple bandits here, and they... Well, one of them dies for the cost of two glaze, but yeah, overall, the center of the map is pretty well... Pretty well contestable right now. So the sponge has put his glaze there. 
they could easily be taken out. And in fact, Raven coming in here, Ballistic is going to try to do that. And fails completely due to the fact that it cannot hit moving units very easily. However, a Phoenix coming in, which means that will stop it. That will correct it. That will, that will give him that particular kill. Alright, and Anarchid not building anything right now, except for defenses. He's moving heavily into getting his defenses and economy set up, which... Baron has a really unfortunate tendency to devolve into massive defense-heavy ma setup. Like, the valley isn't really takeable. There's defenders all along the ridges that lead to the valley. It's basically impossible to get in. However, I'm not sure what's going to happen in this game. And Raven can get rid of one of the... Yeah, I guess we're in one of the gremlins. Gremlins only have 550 health. So Ravens can one-shot them. So enough Ravens. You have as many Ravens as they have Gremlins. You can take out their Gremlins. And one of the Gremlins getting in a bad spot and taken out by a Bandit. No defenses in Blaze to get rid of it. So that Bandit just gets a free Gremlin. Some Glaze is going to come in and try to counter. Which... It's a little late now. <laughs> so I gotta say, it's... Yeah, you're... You could try, but it's too late. And Phoenix is up. So a nice spread of fire will be forthcoming. Against these defenders, this is where it really should be done. Get these defenders out. Bit tricky though, but if he moves in with the Raven... Yeah, he's gonna move in with the Raven. He's gonna see the defenders, and from there... Phoenix, now the defenders has run out of its power. Actually gonna try to target the Anarchist Commander. No, not even. Gonna go instead for the Glaives. Takes out a couple Glaives. Not at the cost of the Phoenix. Does save the Phoenix, gets it out of there. And the Bandit can't quite move in. It's close though, but not quite. Comics in the center as well, so looks like Cuba is gonna try to build up inside of Anarchy and the Sponge's base. Getting a Lotus at the center, Cube is being his typically aggressive self. Though Anarchy, well, four defenses, but that's all he's really got. He's actually got a fairly weak... Yeah, his military is the weakest right now. Offensive units, lowest cost in total, and primarily that's his commander, actually. His commander is 1,200 of that, just 300 on the ground. It's basically about five glaives. That's all he's got. The Sponge also doesn't have all that much, although he's got mostly Gremlins. Yeah, Cube and Eternal Rookie are in a pretty good spot right now. Dagon Ravens over to the north. Does spot the defenders in time, though, and he's yeah able to see those. However, nice! Getting the Phoenix on the defenders. Unfortunately, the Phoenix does die, as do two of the defenders. Or, no, just one of the defenders, unfortunately, for that Phoenix. Didn't do as well as I would have liked. Nice tick trap, but that didn't quite... Well, okay, got rid of the bandit. Wait, no, never mind. Did get rid of a bandit, but ultimately didn't seem to do too much. The Lotus has just gotten in the way. Kind of wish I hadn't missed that. We do have Anarchy... It's probably 2v2. It's kind of tough to hit everything that goes on. There are four players in the game, after all, but... I do try, and I do like having co-commentators for that reason. Unfortunately, couldn't get that today. Flores was busy, and right now it's kind of tricky to co-commentate replays. But yeah, Flores is rather busy. So, couldn't have him in. And Google Frog was playing, and Sightoth is not here. And I think Lightman was here for a bit. But I haven't actually set up anything with him so far, so a bit tricky. And waste of a tick, looks like... Whose tick was that? I don't know, it just sort of exploded over here. I guess, oh, I see, it was... Of course, Cube has a massive defense set up inside of Anakin and the Sponge's territory. That was the Sponge's tick. Or Anakin or the Sponge, one of the two. One of their ticks. Getting ripped apart by a defender. Being spotted in advance and destroyed. So yeah, Cube, pretty strong defensive position, but... Not a lot of units to push this forward. Yeah, Baron, like I said, has a tendency to do this. We do have a ground switch from Eternal Rookie. No air switch from Anakin to the Sponge. And economy-wise, Anakin and the Sponge are slightly ahead. Anakin particularly is slightly ahead. This Medley Striders over to the northeast are really what's giving him that edge. But if he attacks pretty heavily with... I mean, a couple Warriors even would do it. QB sent a couple Warriors forward. Or, not Warriors. Should say, not QB. Eternal Rookie would be the one sending Warriors in. Eternal Rookie, looks like he's gonna try to... Yeah, he's gonna get rid of the Conjurer, actually. He's gonna go straight for that. And does get rid of it at the cost of the Raven. That was odd. Normally they go past the wall. But anyway, at the cost of the Raven, he does get rid of that. And looks like Convicts trying to build up some Lotuses before they, all the Convicts are gonna die. Unfortunately, Lotuses do not stand to Zeus's very well. Those Lotuses will go down, as will the Convicts behind them. So, unfortunately, Cube will lose this position in Anakin the Sponge's base, but he did take it, and actually did assert it decently well. 
same time, we do have a raid of warriors coming in here. Eternal Rookie, his commander in place, along with some Rockos. Perfect counter. Getting rid of the warriors. One of the warriors goes down. The other warrior still managed to escape. Yeah, killed the warrior for very little. And another... Ooh, the Zeus's are going down. Looks like Anarchid lost the Zeus. The Sponge kept his behind. Anarchid moved a bit too far forward. Does lose the Zeus. To combination of Felon and to Lotus. Now we have Bandit and Convict Ball for Cubay. He's got to be careful with this Felon, though. He doesn't have much time before the Sponge moves in with all these Zeuses and rips apart that Felon. Got to be careful about that. For some reason, is terraforming a hole in the ground. Not sure what he's terraforming that for. A little odd. Normally, you terraform a unit down into the ground. Often, commanders do that. But nothing was around here. Not sure why. Maybe trying to get a choke point? I don't know. If it's a defense tower, you'd want to terraform up, not down. Oh, yeah. You don't want to terraform up, not down. Anyway, Felon Convict up here. More Convicts moving in, so Cubay has his ball set up. And he has some bandits that are going to go forward to try to get rid of these defenders. Five defenders will kill the bandits. Although it looks like... Ah, nice! Wasting their ammo on his own defender. Now is a perfect time to attack. There we go, Cubay knows this, and he is going in after wasting the defender ammo. Clever attack there, and we'll be able to kill the defenders. Ooh, not quite, no. Unfortunately, the defenders are overkilling on the bandits. So those bandits do go down. That defender actually gets up in time to kill the defenders that Iron Curtis set up, and Cubay almost takes... Very nearly takes the north. Okay, he's, he's got it. He's got the northeast. Anarch is going to try to contest it again with a warrior, but it won't work out in QB. Actually, it's really good map control. Is Felon moving in, tearing apart, well, tearing apart a bunch of metal extractors, some glaives. The Zeus's are going to be a problem due to their health, as is the sharpshooter due to the fact that it just killed the Felon. That is a problem. Felon balls are hard to do without Felons. Oh, oh, I see. It's QB doing that. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's digging metal extractors into the ground, making it harder to hit those. Interesting tactic, though, unfortunately, it is digging those metal extractors into the ground in Anarchid and the Sponge's territory, which means they can take advantage of this. They can build a metal extractor as opposed to Cubay. Although, admittedly, if they just trivially try to build a metal extractor, they will build Cubay's metal extractor rather than their own. Let's see, Anarchid. Okay, Anarchid does get rid of the metal extractor, so it doesn't work out for Cubay, unfortunately. Didn't dig it deep enough. And now his territory has been lost here. He has lost the territory that he had claimed. But he still took the northeast, and he still managed to deal a lot of damage. Taking a lot of, out of what Anarchid and the Sponge had. Keeping them in the back foot for a while, though unfortunately Anarchid, for them at least, Anarchid did expand to the southwest. The northeast has been freed up, but the southwest not so much. However, Anarchid's commander just about to get killed. One sh good shot with the sharpshooter. Very nearly killed it. It is a recon com. 1600 health. If another sharpshooter shot comes in, though I don't think it's going to happen. That sharpshooter, yeah, the range is too small. It can't see it from that angle either. But if another good sharpshooter shot comes in, or just another good shot, at any rate, Anakin has to move his commander back, leaving these defenders without repair. Without easy repair, at least. Ugh, come on. Anyway, QB going for another Felon Ball. There is a sharpshooter, however, in place for Anakin, but it is in his own base. Sorry, not Anakin, the Sponge. Once again, in his own base, QB giving up this section in the northeast, going for the southwest instead. And the Sponge sending a sniper down to deal with the Felon. But the Felon will be able to get rid of the defenders before that happens. And ultimately open this entire area up. Ultimately, Cubay is just going to take this... He might take the Southwest. He should go for the Southwest. Not the Northeast. The North is going to be a bit risky. Although, oh, a lack of energy for the Sponge. His units are decloaking. Yeah, Sharpshooter cannot remain cloaked. So that means Turner Wick is going to have the advantage on the Sharpshooting if he spots it. And it is... He has line of sight. Once the cloak drops again... If the cloak drops again, we'll see if the energy drops. No, energy has been recovered. However, that is still about to be dropped, and... Oh, unfortunately, the sharpshooter goes for a warrior instead of the other sharpshooter. That would have been a really good sharpshooter kill. However, the felon did go to the southeast, sorry, southwest, and did take out the metal extractors and the defenders. So the southwest has been taken for Cubay. Northeast being taken as well. Actually, Cubay's commander going down. Just missed that. Cubay's commander goes down to some Zeus's, so... Northeast probably going to be Anarchist once again. We'll see, though. Anakin and the Sponge are kind of on the back foot. QB having lost his commander, that's a big blow. But notice his metal is pretty close. Despite losing his commander, he's still on par with metal, so he actually had an advantage for metal extractors. And also for reclaim, reclaiming all the stuff over here. And now he's taking the southwest. Gonna take that pretty strongly. And Anakin and the Sponge don't have a very... They don't have any real defenses, honestly. Yeah, they got nothing, although... 
The sharpshooter has been killed. Looks like it died to the warriors that was trying to run away from. And that sharpshooter... Ooh, doesn't actually hit anything. Felon gets away scot-free. Center of the map, we see that Cubay and Eternal Rookie really have... Mostly Cubay. Eternal Rookie is mostly focused on the south. Cubay is focused on the northwest... Sorry, northeast. Northwest is Anakin, the sponge's base. But yeah, map control is very much in Cubay and Eternal Rookie's hands. And Cubay has taken the southwest Eternal Rookie. Get one's me gets one mech. Cubay gets two. They are slightly ahead economically. The sponge is very much ahead militarily. He's not lost any of his Zeus's, or maybe one or two. But he basically has been keeping the Zeus's alive. Though, we don't see, thankfully, a lot of defenses up. That's nice to see. The defenses that were built up did not last very long. Broken quite quickly. I figured, I kind of figured in 2v2 there'd be enough units that would break it pretty quickly. Although, even then, just the Felon Ball. The fact that the Felon Ball was an easy option to get to, that did the trick. That being said, Felon Conflict Ball does mean rolling defenses, a hard push. But that doesn't work too well against a bunch of Zeus's. Still, Anarchid kind of behind, quite behind militarily. The Sponge quite ahead militarily. Cuban and Eternal Rookie are fairly even with each other. But not too far ahead, and really it's going to come down to killing these Zeus's. These Zeus's die, and a leak, a Wyvern coming in to ensure that that happens. Wow, okay, if that Wyvern comes in, those Zeus's, well, they're going to be softened up. They're not going to die, it's 2,000 per shot, but still, that's, that's going to be a big shot. Very big shot. Speaking of big shots, Sharpshooter is getting into range, and Felon, there are two Felon Balls right now for, yes, two Felon Balls for Cubay, only two. One going to the north, about to get... It gets disabled. Felon goes down, the convicts are forced to retreat, but the South Felon Ball has really no opposition. Should be able to just rip everything apart. And with these convicts, it'll have enough shield energy likely to kill everything. And Wyvern, where is that Wyvern going? I want to see it. I want to follow this thing, because this is a big deal. Oops. And that Wyvern going straight for the commander. Will it kill it? And, yeah, oh yes, it kills that commander, all right. Between the two of that, only one Zeus survives the 49 health in the middle of a giant crater. Nice calm snipe with the Leica or the Wyvern. I've I don't see you don't really see Wyverns off enough, honestly. But we saw it there, and that was nice. Over to the sponge coming in for a counterattack. Losing a lot of his glaives, he had a decent promising start, but these glaives will not deal a whole lot of damage. Get rid of a couple defenders. Actually, you know what? No, they will deal a decent amount of damage. They will get rid of a mechs as well. Just barely, but they do get rid of it outside of the Lotus range. But Eternal Rookie coming in with his forces. No further forces coming in, however. And another Leco attack in the center, taking out, or at least softening up a lot of these Zeus's. Only kills a couple of them. Oh, wait, no. Kills the Sponge's commander on top of that. So double comp snipe with the Wyvern. Nicely done. Very nicely done, Eternal Rookie. Good choice. That was a very good strategic option there. Panned out extremely well. Cubay setting up more lotuses, but this is this is a massive advantage for Cubay and the sponge. And turn away, sorry, not not the sponge. The sponge has still a fairly large in, he has a fairly large army, but the Zeus's are heavily damaged. If the felon ball gets close to them, or anything really, and the sharpshooter is not active, though that's kind of the problem. There are two sharpshooters. The felon ball can't do much. But even Glaive's coming is going to do a lot. And Le and the Wyvern coming in for another pass. It is going to finish off those Zeus's. Most of the Zeus's are heavily enough damage that, well, two of them go down. Not a bad shot. Kills two of the Zeus's. Heavily weakening the Sponge's army. And right now, Eternal Rookie has the army advantage. Most of that being the Leco, I mean the Wyvern at 2,000 metal. Half of his army is the metal. Sorry. Half of his army metal value is the Wyvern. The other half is his commander, actually. Like 500 metal outside of that, but that's basically it. So if he loses the Wyvern to the commander, he's lost a great deal of his metal army advantage. So Cubay really has the major standing army, and even then, not much. He has a felon... No, he has a bunch of convicts moving along the map. Building up defenses here and there, and a few rogues, and a felon. But other than that, not much. It looks like he's getting a caretaker for another factory. It's too far away to really help out this factory here, but it looks like he's going to be building another factory. Oh no, it is close enough. Never mind. Just the distance suggests that it's going to be used for another factory. That being said, I don't know why it would be. Cubay has five convicts right here. He could just spawn on any factory he wants as quickly as he can. As quickly as metal will allow. Which isn't that quickly, actually. That's Well, okay, 20 metal. With reclaim, yeah, it is pretty quick. However, instead, you don't have to pump out units as quickly as metal will allow. Which is fairly quick. But looks probably about 15 or so metal. Actually, no, with reclaim and nope. That was a bit of production, yeah. So it's about 15 metal in on units. But still, he is pushing it very hard. 
Kyubei aware of those snipers. He wants to make sure that don't go down. But it looks like what's going to happen? The leak, the Wyvern's going to come in and kill the two snipers. Ooh, not quite, unfortunately. That spot was not where the snipers were. That was where a few glaives were, but not the snipers. He manages to kill the snipers, though. Then it will be a big deal. And Jumbot Factory Switch, apparently. Puppy Spam? Yeah, Jumbot Factory Switch here for Eternal Rookie. Oh, Eternal Rookie going for... Sorry. Eternal Rookie going for Puppy Spam. Totally different here. The sponge... I thought the Sponger Anarchid had Puppy Spam, because that would actually be interesting. I don't think that would work. Actually, no, enough puppies would work, actually. Yeah. That would do the trick. Although, Wyverns have a pretty high range, so you'd have to get on his return path. So, Rogues using up the Sharpshooter shots. Nice switch by Kyubei, avoiding the problems of the Felon. Gremlins are in place to try to deal with the, League, the Wyvern, but like I said, the Wyvern has very high range, so honestly, it's not that easy. And Zeus, Sharpshooter coming in, tearing apart a lot of this stuff. Glaives coming in kind of just one at a time, not the best way of dealing with this. Those glaives could be more than just a distraction, and Eternal Ricky knows it. He is making sure the glaives do not rack to their death. The spun, okay. Anarchy going for Shieldbot Factory Switch. So, thinking Racketeers. However, a couple of the Sharpshooters do, no, they don't go down. A couple of Zeus's go down, or take damage. None of the Gremlins go down, however. And the Wyvern, most importantly, does not go down. The Wyvern's still pretty good health. Only takes about 500 damage from that. Still, the Sharpshooters are probably going to be just killed by ground forces. They probably aren't going to be killed out. Unless, unless energy is taken out, but I don't think it's going to happen. Due to the lack of metal, Anakin and the Sponge can't really produce themselves out of energy. And nice eraser, too. I just pointed that out. No one ever uses erasers. I like to see them. It's good to see them. They're very useful. Because they cloak everything. And actually, Anarchid's very heavily focused on cloak between Sharpshooter and Erasers. He does have the energy for it right now due to the lack of metal on production, but even then, it is not a great position. In fact, Eternal Rookie and Cuba have this game. It's going to be another couple minutes, and then they're going to take it. You just look at the map control right now. Anarchid and the Sponge can't really break out of this. If they try, there's so many rogues. And a felon in back here, just to deal with the glaives, might not be a terrible idea. Though, it, I can see why it's not what QBA is going for. He's going very much for rogues. That is what he wants. He does have a felon actually further back. But I meant with the convicts. Still, doesn't much matter. He also has defenses set up. Bunch of defenders. Massive line of them. And Eternal Wiki with a Lotus, just to get rid of a razor. Defense Wars! But doesn't really matter. We are arguing some rogues in here to deal with basically everything. Newton. Wow, interesting choice. But no, it's not going to be built up in time, unfortunately. And puppies, puppy spam for Eternal Rookie to get rid of the gremlins once he detects them. And we're just to take out the reclaim because he can't really secure that reclaim field easily. But he can't take out the gremlins. He can use their bodies to build more puppies. And he's doing exactly that. Although he could do that a bit more often. And another nice Wyvern shot. This Wyvern. Unit of the match. This Wyvern right here, that has taken the match. Made it its own. And I'm getting too close to it. But if, yeah, if there's any, if there's any unit that's made that match work for QE and Atomic Rookie, it has been that Wyvern. I'm glad they built the Wyvern, because an early game, I think Bronze Match game, not Wyvern. Unfortunately, ooh, Eternal Rookie loses his commander. Looks like it was to a, a Roach, a Cloaked Roach, a couple Cloaked Roaches. Still... They've still won the game, and whoa! Roach blowing up in the factory! Yeah, Roach just got blown up in its own factory. And also forced terraforming. Oh, that Roach can't even get out of the factory now. So yeah, just completed Roach in its own factory, but it doesn't matter! We are on to game five! Whoa! Game five! Last game. Very even match so far. We'll see what that's on. This is going to be. It's gonna be neat. It's gonna be on Red Comet. I have that for you in just a moment. And that will be the tournament. When that's done, that's done. That's it. That's the tournament. Took nine hours in total, though I wasn't there for the last hour and a half. But it took nine hours in total. But it will soon come to its conclusion. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back, 0K fans, to the final, finals game for the June 2v2 tournament. This is Anakin the Sponge versus Cuban Eternal Rookie. Cuban Eternal Rookie just won the last game on Baron, so Anakin the Sponge chose Red Comet. We'll see how that goes for them. That's the map they're confident on. But 
What tricks do Cuban and Rookie have up their sleeve? We'll find out once we start the game right now. And the trick is going to be gunships. Black on Rush. Maybe. We'll see what he goes for, depending on what he builds. Black Dawn or... Oh, no! No, 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 no! Vindicator, Calm Nap. Cuban and Eternal Rookie want to finish this game fast. They want to be done with this. They want to just win. Going for a commander kidnap. Vindicator to... Oh, come on. I'm sure it's gone with the loading times. That's weird. Sorry about that. I don't know why it's taking forever to load stuff. Or just... Vindicator? What the hell is going on? Okay, that's really weird. So anyway, Vindicator is... Oh, I guess his integral mini has to change around what buttons are available? I don't know. Vindicator will be up. And Nats are soon following in the build queue. Okay, good. No longer lagging. Nats soon following in the build queue. Blight Vehicle's up for Anakin the Sponge, but it looks like... Yeah, they are aware of what's going on. Oh no, never mind. Did they? Oh yeah, he's pointing out that Line of Sight did not get to the gunship plant. There's no vision of the gunship plant. Does have vision of the other factories, but no vision of the gunship plant. They don't know what's going on. Just barely, but they don't know. And the Nat's about to be built up. I mean, it's not the gunship plant. They probably would think Black Dawn Rush, actually, unless it's saw the Vindicator on top of it. Or the Nat's. So that's going to be... One commander is going to go down basically for free, and the second commander is going to be a bit trickier to take out. But if they do, that will be very powerful. I mean, that's going to be having their economy, having Anarchy and the Sponge's economy right off the bat. It's actually not even in the base yet. Or, actually, it has been. It has gone in the base. has hit some, dealt some damage. But Anarchid getting his commander captured just now. And it has been captured. The Vindicator moves back. Moving that commander out of there. Going to move it into their base and kill it. That's really how it goes. Yeah, they just take the commander with them and then it dies. Are the Kodachi in here trying to stop this from happening? Not really going to matter so much though. Actually, it dies because he gets thrown to the ground. Gets, well, a lot of it is just thrown to the ground, gets the fall damage. Doesn't work especially well on this particular map. The best time I saw it was on Frozen Planet, because that has a very high... You can have your units quite high when they drop the commander, but even then, Anarchid loses his commander, and the sponge, has he protected his commander sufficiently? No, no he has not. He has no units around his commander at all. And that Vindicator, is it going to go in? Well, it's healing up right now, but it's probably going to go in for another kill. But we are getting Black Dons as backup. You know, just in case. Just in the off chance it doesn't work. That Vindicator... What the? That Vindicator... Well, helping out with anti, with anti-ground support. Not the best option, not sure why he's doing that, but actually he's far enough away from the Panther that it can't be hit by it. Out of range of the Panther? Never mind, that's actually a really good idea. I guess it worked out. Although it could actually can hit it. Does set it on fire from the ground. Thanks to the burn blow projectile, it is on fire. Ooh, another shot. Kodachi does go down though, but the Vindicator needs more healing before the sponge gets nabbed. Is the sponge gonna get nabbed? I don't know. I think he will. He has no real support around him. Once that Vindicator gets healed up once again, then probably more gnats. If we see or do we have gnats? We do have gnats. The gnats are up, the Vindicator is ready. Second common nap can go in. However, Anarchid has recovered decently well. He's still down in energy though, that's one thing. His metal is okay, but his energy is not. And Eternal Wookiee very much ahead in terms of metal and in terms of energy. Actually, is he, is he reclaiming? Okay, that's why. Reclaiming all the heavy tanks that fell in here. And his onions as well. They were killed in the process, but still. There it comes. There's the Vindicator and the Nats, as well as a Black Dawn, just for extra support. Either kill a sponge here or kill it in his own base. Or use that to kill off the secondary supports coming in. Scorchers and... Oh, are the Nats going to kill? The Nats do get... The Commander does get nabbed. That's the second com nab. Vindicator with the nab. And fortunately, Anarchid, in his attempt to help, does end up hitting the Sponge's Commander, setting it on fire, and I think that's going to get killed when it drops in the ground. Let's see. It drops, and BAM! Right as soon as it hits the ground, goes up in smoke. 
That was major thing. I'm really surprised. Yeah, pointing out in the chat, needed crasher. I am kind of surprised that wasn't built. It is now being built, but this is too late. It's way too late. The Light Vehicle Factory is very nearly dead. I think one crash is going to get out before the Light Vehicle Factory dies. Maybe? Nope, not even. Not even that much. Light Vehicle Factory goes down. And that is... Wow, this is a very short game five. Like I said, Cube and Eternal Rookie just wanted to win. They didn't want to drag it out as long, any longer than they absolutely had to. And that Vindicator, like I said, that, that could have been done. I mean, they could have been gotten rid of. Scout a bit sooner, would have seen it. Or a bit further, would have seen it. Okay, that's a bit, okay, I can't really blame for that one. Or more importantly, got anti-air sooner, it would have completely done it. But at this point, Cube, Anakin and the Sponge are just very far behind in military. The Sponge has no military whatsoever. Anarchid has a bit. He has a, co a Copperhead and a Kodachi. While Cuban and Eternal Rookie, they have the economy advantage. They have the military advantage. Another Black Dawn coming in for good measure, because why not? And at the same time, Scorches are coming in as well to just get rid of the rest of the Sponge's economy. Not a whole lot of defense in place to deal with that. A Defender here get well. Oh, gets rid of both Scorchers. So Eternal Rookie does lose the Scorchers, but doesn't much matter. Anarchid and the Sponge have to rebuild from scratch. Though Anarchid doing quite well. The Sponge building into Cloakie Buff Factory on the north side of the map. Same time though, another Black Dawn is almost done. Second Black Dawn, five seconds away from being done. While for Eternal Rookie, Light Vehicle Factory coming in with Scorchers. And the Vindicator, is it going to go for another nav of something? Not sure what it would go for. Copperhead maybe, but that would be really risky. If he takes it out, that would be useful, but yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like this was going to happen. We aren't possibly going to witness a Copperhead nav. Don't know though. We'll see. Probably trying to figure out what it is worth nabbing. No, never mind. The carpet's gonna go down to the Scorchers. So, looks like he's gonna nab some random unit. Not transporting any units in. He is trying to steal a unit out. Has the Nat as well, but not really finding a whole lot of useful targets. This one must be anti-ground support, honestly. Yeah, gets rid of this Defender. Yeah, just anti-ground support. No real, no nabbing going on. Well, the Kodachi wouldn't be a bad idea to nab out. The Black Dawn... Should be able to take care of all this stuff, though. And at the same time, we do have Eternal Wookiee taking care of Anarchid's forward base. And the Black Dawn will be able to take care of the Heavy Tank Factory. One more shot will take it out. And... About to go down. Down it goes. Heavy Tank Factory down for Anarchid. Anarchid has no factory, no production potential. The Sponge, 30 seconds away from rebuilding that Cloakie Buff Factory. Lack of Commander makes it really hard to rebuild factories. And, for good measure, nab a Welder, which is attacking the Vindicator while it's being nabbed. But it doesn't matter. That is it. That is victory for Cube and Eternal Rookie. Congratulations, you have won the 0K 2v2 June turn. Cube and Eternal Rookie win that with a calm nab. That is going to be it for me. I didn't actually expect to do a normal time cast, but there I go. My normal time stream still goes on, even with the tournament happening early in the morning. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for having watched earlier, assuming you did. And that is going to be for me tonight. Expect the YouTube videos to be up probably tomorrow. There might be up today, but I'm probably going to just put off editing until tomorrow. Because that is nine hours of video to go through to chop up into every single match. Excluding bronze match. I'm not going to bother with that. But yet, yeah, that's a lot to chop up. It's going to be a little while. Not sure if I want to do it right now or have a huge amount of time to do it right now, but... Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.